else read the Quran, but it was no it was no epiphany for me. It was more just a matter of I, I read it and I and I found when I was a little kid the stories were fascinating. But like everything else, I just grew out of it. The more I learned about the world, the more I realized those stories were just silly. So it was just a gradual evolution. Now, is religion good or bad for the world? On the whole, I think it's bad. It's not to say that some people don't do good things. But I, one of my favorite quotes is a quote of a colleague of mine, Steven Weinberg, who's a Nobel Prize winning physicist, who said, there are good people and there are bad people. And good people do good things and bad people do bad things. When good people do bad things, it's religion. Estadísticamente en Estados Unidos se dice que la población de razón de científico es mayoritariamente atea y es inversamente proporcional a la población de la cárcel que es mayoritariamente creyente. Quiero preguntarte, ¿crees que el mundo sería mejor si la mayoría fuera atea? Look, I, I don't make predictions about how the world would be. All I know is if we base our actions on reality. I cannot imagine a world would not be a better place. All of us should base our reactions, our, our, our decisions, on empirical evidence because then, then we, we have a better basis for making decisions. And so when I, don't, when I think of politics and government, and one of the reasons why I write in newspapers and I speak publicly on television. Now, will the mis future be miserable even if we learn what the problems are and try to address them? Maybe so, but I think at least we can try, as in the nature of this conference, change the world. And if we want to change the world for better, we should base our actions on reality. That's all. I was wondering, um, don't you think it is a kind of atheist fundamentalism somehow? Like to say, I don't believe in what you believe. This is absurd. Your beliefs are... Look, I don't know. Oh, do you believe that, that when someone blew a horn, the earth stopped, the, the sun stood still in the sky? Because if it did, every building and every human being would have died, okay? Because the sun doesn't go around the earth, first of all. The earth goes around the sun. The reason the sun goes in the sky, we now know, is because the earth turns. If the earth stopped, the physics would tell us that everything, all the, all the mountains, all the buildings, everything would be destroyed. You don't believe that any more than I do, so don't pretend you do, okay? So what I, what I say is, look, I can't tell you what to believe. I can tell you how to reason based on what we know and what is what we know to be false based on the fact that it's inconsistent with evidence. But in no way am I suggesting a belief system. I'm saying, think for yourself, ask questions, and when you read things that seem so crazy that they're probably wrong, they're probably wrong, okay? And so there's no fundamentalism. You know, I get, myself and Richard Dawkins, we get called strive for atheists. Because, and you know when I started getting called a strident atheist, a fundamentalist atheist, is when I wrote a book that just asked the question, could you create a universe without God? I just asked the question. But even asking the question in our modern society turns you into a strident atheist. And we should not live in a society where we can't ask questions about anything and ridicule everything. We ridicule politics, we ridicule sex, we ridicule science. We should be allowed to ridicule God. But don't you think uh, religion has uh, some benefits, like uh, of course religion helping history. people when they are in distress? Well, yeah, no, look, religion right now provides consolation, comfort, and for many people it provides a sense of community, belonging. It does all of these things for many people. That's why it's been ubiquitous. Religion, if religion didn't have an important social role, it wouldn't have existed throughout all of human history. It obviously fulfills a human need potentially a need that we're hardwired by evolution to need. So the fact that it fulfills that need is undeniable. The question is, do we need religion to fill that need? And I think we don't. I think we can find community together if instead of every Sunday we had preachers talking about an imaginary being, we instead maybe had a rock concert, or talking about quantum mechanics, or something where we could bring people together and talk about reality. I think the things that the good thing that religion provides, and there's no doubt it does provide something, doesn't need to be provided by religion. It could be provided by getting together and saying, we have a common humanity, we have common problems, we have common needs, common goals. Let's celebrate that commonality, and at the same time, let's celebrate that diversity. And so I don't think we need religion to do any of that. How do you think that science fiction inspires scientists? And, uh, well, do you think that science fiction inspires 
Well, you know, I've written a book that this is a Star Trek, and people think I'm an expert about science fiction, although I'm not. But, but one thing I will say, and I said it in the book, is that the real universe is far more interesting than the universe of science fiction. I don't really read science fiction anymore, not very much. I read it when I was younger, because it does help. It's my, it's my friend Stephen Hawking wrote the foreword for that book, and, and, and he said, science fiction helps inspire the human imagination. But all fiction helps inspire the human imagination, which is why I love literature. But the real universe is far more interesting than the universe of science fiction. And anything that you see in movies is probably, when you see the 23rd century in movies, it probably will pale in comparison to the technologies of the real 23rd century. In my talk today, I talked about how much things have changed in 90 years. I was talking to another scientist right afterwards. I could never have imagined in some ways, if, even when I was a young professor in the 1980s, that what has happened has happened. And that's what makes it so exciting. That's what makes science so exciting. It's not knowing the answers, but not knowing the answers. That there's so much left out there to learn. And that's why we have to keep exploring. ¿Nos puedes hablar un poco sobre el proyecto de esta película en la que participas y la importancia de la ciencia en el cine? Gracias. Ok, sí, yeah, I, 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 uh, science, it's nice to see science in movies. In fact, some of you may know, like, on the first day here, I, I did a panel with my good friend Werner Herzog, who's a very famous filmmaker, and we are friends. And we, our friendship began because I was actually a judge at the Sundance Film Festival and ended up giving him an award. And, I, and my, the award that we gave was for trying to encourage science in movies. But The Unbelievers is a, is a movie that I'm very happy with uh, because I think the young filmmakers, first of all, did a very good job. I like the music in it, among other things. But it's what it was designed to be was a rock and roll tour film about science. It was designed, they wanted to follow Richard and me around the world because they'd seen us in some venues with thousands of people and it reminded them of a rock concert. And they wanted to show what the life was really like of being quote unquote, if you must, a celebrity scientist. What it was like. But at the same time, what they wanted to show was that we're, what we're trying to do is say science and reason should be the basis of action and it's okay not to believe. And one of the things, the greatest uh, happiness that I have out of that movie is every day, and I mean this, every day I get dozens of letters from people around the world, young people, saying, and older people, saying, this is what it's done for me. It allows me to feel better about myself. I didn't believe in God, and I felt I was a bad person, or I felt I was alone. And when they see thousands of people willing to come out and say, it's okay not to believe, you can be a good person and still not believe, it helps them feel better about themselves. And not a day goes by when I don't get letters from people telling me that. And if that is the only impact of the movie, I'll be happy.